So this video is about an evolutionary arms race between the garter snake and the California rough skin newt, which Spencer will later introduce in another video. Um, they've been competing with each other for thousands if not millions of years to see who will survive. And that's still going on today. So the battle continues. So Nick Aguirre here. And Nick has featured on other videos, um, licking slugs. Oh, you're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have right here? Well, right here I have a commonly misconcepted garter snake. A lot of people call it a gardener snake. Um, I remember growing up as a kid catching them. Uh, most kids do, or most should. They're a lot of fun. They don't really, they're not really aggressive snakes. They do smell bad. They, They'll wipe poop on you, yeah. yeah. They secrete a stench as a defense mechanism. Um, and I actually have it all over my hands. It smells really, really bad. But what I want to talk about is the arms race that it's in with another one of my favorite animals that are out here in the creek. It's a California Ruskin Newt. Um, these guys actually love to hunt them. Like their favorite foods are small fish, insects, frogs, and salamanders. Um, they're great hunters. They're great swimmers. Um, they can actually swim really, really well underwater and can hold their breath for quite a long time. Um, it's also used as a defense mechanism. They'll dive underwater from birds of prey like kingfishers and other things that are trying to eat them. Um, but what this guy has right now is an arms race with the rough skin newt. Um, the rough skin newt is an extremely toxic newt. Uh, it's actually, I think there's stories, I don't know for sure, of campers and hunters that have actually boiled them in their coffee and they've died because mm. they're so toxic. So they put it. They got in the coffee pot in an accident, like when they were scooping it up out of the creek. Yeah, or they went up to the creek and they scooped up a coffee pot, not thinking, boiled up the water, made their coffee, drank the coffee, and they were all dead. Um, so they're extremely toxic. They're still good to play with. They're not going to kill you for handling them. So you can still let the kids play with them and stuff. Just make sure you wash your hands afterwards. And try um, to put them in the same place that you found them too, because they have little territories. Yeah, it's about a hundred yard territory, if I remember correct. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that one. But this guy, when they hunt, they've been hunting for hundreds of years eating salamanders and newts. But what's happened is they've created a resistance and a resilience to the toxin in the salamander and the newt. And what it's done is it's advanced the color along their skin. And I'm not really sure why. What I think is they actually have become toxic from eating the toxic animal. But they've adapted to having bright colors as a defense mechanism and so it kind of scares whoever would eat them since they're eating something poisonous maybe their flesh is poisonous or at least they want their predators to think so. that yeah, yeah. Okay. and what's happening is their the garter snake is actually building a higher resistance to the toxin that the newts secrete and the newts are actually building a higher toxicity level to defend against the garter snake so the newt is getting more and more poisonous. Yes. And the garter snake is getting more and more resistant. Yes. And it also happens with uh, rattlesnakes and ground squirrels. That's the only one I really know for sure. But I'd like to look up and see if there's any others. Because, Evolutionary arms races. Because that is one of the cool little adaptations in nature where two species are in a race to survive. Hmm. So they make a stinky smell to get away. It's not really biting you. Nah. And we're being gentle with it. We're going to stick it back where we found it. Yep. And it's got a full stomach, so it's already hungry. Very cool. Garter snake. And is there is that the only species of garter snake in California? No, there are many species. Um, I know of the Santa Cruz garter snake, the mountain garter snake, there's the common garter snake, and the giant garter snake. Those are all that I know of for now, but I do know there are at least eight in California that I know of and there are subspecies and they do not all look the same. It could be the exact same garter snake of that species and genus 
but depending on the climate and the habitat that it's in, its color can differ from all the others. So it could be rather hard to be certain what actual garter snake it is, but you'll always know it's a garter snake from its keeled scales on the back, and keeled is rigid, so it has a rigid spine, <clears throat> a rigid spine, and what we think, uh, the core members here, we think it helps stabilize the garter snake as it swims. Because they are in water a lot. Yes. Cool, and it's good to note that the San Francisco garter snake is endangered because of loss of habitat, and so we're hoping that um, people pull together and maybe create some habitat. Maybe you can create some backyard habitat with the National Wildlife Federation, like we talked about in one of our previous um, videos on my YouTube channel, and it has links on how you could go there and, and certify your backyard as habitat. Maybe those of you who live in San Francisco can create some San Francisco garter snake habitat. Who knows? Um, it'd be interesting. It's a lot of fun, and it's easy. And if you're interested in saving um, amphibians and reptiles, you can start with savethefrogs.com, savethefrogs.com. Or for kids who want to get interested in how to help amphibians and reptiles, you can go to conserveitforward.com, conserveitforward.com. Avalon Thiessen, she's 12 years old. She's been in the game for a few years now. She's got an International Eco Hero Award, and she likes to save frogs and reptiles. And so she's got a lot of good videos and helpful hints. And um, thanks to Karen, Kate Marion Child, who taught... Nick and I about arms races at um, an, am an amateur naturalist course, and she actually has a book about oak woodlands coming out by, I believe it's Heyday Press. I think it's Heyday Press. And she'll probably talk about other arms races in that book. So um, it should be out probably next year, 2014, early 2014. So Kate, Mary, and Child, we would really appreciate her taking time to teach us stuff. All right. Thank you, Nick Aguirre. Thank you.